So for this next part, we're going to install the source bottle into the uh, discharge port of the master cylinder. And we're going to do it quickly because it's going to spill fluid everywhere. It's a bit of a messy method, this one. Welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to bleed tiny cart brakes. Now, we have covered this once before, but it was many moons ago when we first started our YouTube channel. So this is the updated version. Thanks to everybody that's been subscribing over the last few weeks. We really appreciate it. And also following us on Instagram and Facebook. Now on to today's video. Okay, so the last time we had the number five machine on the track, driver reported a spongy brake pedal. Now, what does that mean? Well, when you push your foot on the, the brake pedal, obviously you want a good firm pedal where there's no air or moisture in the, in the brake lines because both air and water can be compressed. So as they get hot, they expand and they become um, compressible. And then you get that real spongy feeling under the foot on the brake pedal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in some brake, uh, fresh brake fluid and bleed the system so we get a really good firm pedal for the driver. So the first thing we're gonna do, because we're gonna be working on the master cylinder, is we're gonna give it a quick clean up with some methylated spirits and a rag. Now you can use brake cleaner if that's what you've got but the methylated spirits works really good on the brake fluid if you've spilled any. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the sump plug with a five millimeter T-bar. Now these things can be very tight and if that's the case, we're going to use the other end of the T-bar to crack those and then we can spin them off with the normal end. So first up, we've got the Tony Cart brake bleeder. Now if you haven't got one of these, I really suggest you save up all your race budget and get yourself one, it really makes this job easy. Got the reservoir here at the top with a cap and then there is a valve at the bottom to turn the fluid on and off. So the first thing we're going to do is insert the brake bleeding tool into the master cylinder fill plug hole. Next up we're going to remove the reservoir cap. This is a normal right hand thread. Just undo that and then we can pull these guys off as well. And here you can see the full assembly. This one goes in first, then this guy, and this guy last. Now using a small syringe, we're gonna remove the old brake fluid out of the reservoir and put some fresh stuff in. Simply suck up the old fluid and spray it in an old container and you're good to go. Yep. Now that we've removed the old fluid, we're ready to top up the reservoir and start bleeding the brakes. So bust open a new bottle of brake fluid and pour it into the reservoir. So the next point is to open the valve to let the air come up the spout here because we're trying to get the fluid down into the system but you've got to be careful because you will backfill the system and you'll start flooding out over the top of your reservoir. So make sure that when you're doing it you're working pretty quickly with the brake pedal to get the air out of the system. If you do overfill it, just get the syringe and take some fluid out of the reservoir. Okay, so with some fuel line, if you've got some lying around, you can just put it on the nipple. Now you don't have to use this, but it does make the job a little bit cleaner. Otherwise the brake fluid is just gonna come charging out of this bleed nipple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix the fuel line onto the nipple with a, a zip tie. So now you can run your brake fluid down to an empty container and catch the excess brake fluid. So with the valve in the closed position, pump the brake pedal a few times to get some pressure in the lines and then hold the pedal down. So now with an eight millimeter ring spanner, we're gonna undo the nipple, push the pedal all the way down, lock off the bleed nipple, open the valve, now release the brake pedal and then close the valve off on the bleed tool before you overflow the reservoir. Okay, so that's step one. Now we're going to repeat that step again and again until we don't get any more air bubbles coming out of the bleed nipple. So now we're ready to reinstall the cap assembly. But first up, I want to remove a little bit of brake fluid here because it's pretty hard to see on the camera, but it was right up near the lip. So you want to have the brake fluid about halfway into the reservoir. And we're going to reinstall that one first. 
put the little plastic guy in there with him. Now we can reinstall our cap. So now we can remove the brake bleeding tool. So you can see the little sump washer o-ring there. So just double check them, make sure you haven't got any cracks in that. Wipe up any excessive brake fluid here using some lint-free cloth. And now we're ready to install the discharge plug. And you can clean up any spilled brake fluid with a bit of methylated spirits or some water. Now we're gonna bleed the second side of this system using the old sauce bottle method. Now we had this little guy and we've washed it out with hot soapy water run some methylated spirits through it. We've modified the cap to wedge it down into the master cylinder. So hopefully we can get a little bit of a seal and some pressure to bleed the system. First up, we're gonna remove the discharge plug. Now we're gonna remove the reservoir cap and drain out the old fluid. Now with the source bottle all clean, we are gonna install some brake fluid out of our brake bleeder. You can see here that we've had to modify this a little bit with the grinder just to make it fit the diameter of the, the master cylinder and we also cut the top off. Don't forget we're going to have to change the, the hose off the bleed nipple because we're going to be doing this side now. And then fasten it onto the nipple with a, a new zip tie. So for this next part we're going to install the source bottle into the uh, discharge port of the master cylinder. And we're going to do it quickly because it's going to spill fluid everywhere. It's a bit of a messy method this one. So now we're going to crack the nipple, squeeze the bottle and push the fluid through the system. As you can see we're filling up the reservoir at the same time. Close the nipple, stop squeezing the bottle and then hopefully we can let that air out of the system and we're good to go. But now we've got to get this guy out and we're going to just have to clean up our mess. Mop up any spilled fluid there with a rag. Replace the discharge plug and we've got a little bit of overspill here so I'm going to clean that up as I go using my rag. And we can, we can top up this little reservoir here which is a bit more fluid because we did drain a little bit back into the system. Reinstall the cap assembly. So now that you're all finished, you're going to test the brake pedal and just make sure that when you pull the brakes on, that this little splitter bar pulls in the same both sides. When you have air in one side of the system, uh, you'll see that this guy here will start to pull uh, lopsided. That's when you know you need to bleed your brakes. Okay, so there you have it. There's two ways you can bleed your Tony Cart brakes. Obviously the Tony Cart brake bleeding tool is the preferred method because with the valve you can actually get the, some pressure on the system so there you can bleed it a couple of times and really make sure you don't have any air bubbles left in the lines. But if you do get stuck and you do have a uh, source bottle lying around, you can wash it out and you can get your brakes bled at the track. If you like this video, please consider giving us a thumbs up, smashing that like button, you know the drill. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Power Republic and we'll see you in the next video.